Hey everybody, welcome back to Gideon Stuff and welcome back to Cheap Knife Week, uh, Volume 4. <laughs> this is Episode 3. Um, and today we're taking a look at this knife here. This is the Swiss Tech... Ooh, goodness. Gerundit. Actually, I looked up how to say this. Let me practice. I'll be right back. Alright, it's pronounced Gerundit. I'm probably not pronouncing that right. It's German. Uh, my One of my younger brothers is learning German, so he would probably be able to pronounce that a lot better. Uh, but yeah, Gerundit. Uh, uh, you know what? Screw it. Get back over here, Google. Pronounce that again for us. Let's let, let's hear this expert. Gerundet. Gerundet. Okay, close enough. <laughs> so, so there it is. Uh, interestingly, the word means rounded, um, which fits for this knife. Or another translation I found is um, <laughs> uh, labial, which that's uh, <coughs> um. Pretty, uh, pretty saucy name for a knife. Uh, but uh, yeah, there we go. So there it is. Uh, Swiss Tech Knives. It's been a brand that a couple of you have recommended that I check out. I've been wanting to check them out for a long, long time. Finally did. I did not do an unboxing for this knife, uh, an unboxing video. You guys just too busy. But uh, yeah, so here's the review. Let's go ahead and jump right in. So let's measure the sharpened edge of this blade. Sharpened edge is coming in pretty much exactly at three... Uh, maybe, yeah, pretty much exactly three inches. If we go all the way back to the scale, we're like a little bit over three inches. All righty. Let's go ahead and grab our size comparisons. There's our rat one and our rat two. Not a very large knife. Not a large knife at all. Um, let's go ahead and grab our Civivis. Here's our Elementum and our Praxis. Very nice, very, very nice. Stealing some nomenclature from Bees Blades. I think all of us knife YouTubers do that. We all steal each other's words. Oops. <laughs> then there's the Spyderco PM2 and the Benchmade Bug Out. Almost called it the Spyderco Bug Out. That's not a thing yet. Alrighty, and let's go ahead and compare it against um, the other knives that we have looked at so far in this season of Cheap Knife Week. Here is the Ozark Trail unnamed something or another, and here's the Camillus Treads. So, awesome, awesome. Alrighty, what materials are we looking at with this guy? So, we have an Aus 8 blade, which is pretty cool, it says so right there. First knife that we're looking at that has a blade steel marking this week. So that's awesome. And then we have aluminum and carbon fiber scales over steel liners. And we have a steel clip and an aluminum backspacer. So very, very cool. We are running on bearings. Let's go ahead and go cut some stuff. All righty. Knife number three. Numero tres. This is the Swiss Tech. Oh, what's the name of this thing? The Grunt? The, I don't know. The Grindle? I, I can't remember. It's in the title. Um, so, most expensive knife we're testing for Cheap Knife Week this round. Let's go ahead and talk about that action. Liner lock. Give you great access to the lock bar. I really appreciate that. It is on ceramic bearings. Pretty smooth on the close. The opening action, the flipping action, is a little bit... Interesting. When I first got it out of the box, I missed the first flip because the detent just felt very, very weak. And even now, I can miss a flip easily. But I also got to say, it feels like the detent's breaking, like the detent's gotten stronger. So beforehand, like the first two, couple of days I was carrying this, I was like, okay, the only way to do this is push button. I just got to push button the flipper. That works. Light switching doesn't really work. The detent's not strong enough. Now, I can light switch it no problem. Did the knife break in or did I break in, right? Did, did I adjust something with myself to make it flip better or is the knife actually mechanically getting to be a better flipper? 
I don't know. It might be a mix of the two. It might be one or the other. But long story short is it, it flips fine now. It's it's not the snappiest. It's not, you know, the best flipper ever. Like I said, I can pretty easily fail it, but it's also very easy to get the blade out. So the action is fine. It's it's fine. So there we go. All right, let's talk about the ergonomics. The handle's shaped like a big old pill. And yeah, it's it's comfortable, right? The, there, there's nothing here that is bad, really. It's a very simple shape. We are contoured with these aluminum and with the carbon fiber inlays. And I gotta say, the inlay work is actually better than I was expecting it to be. Um, I do like seeing that. Um, the whole knife itself is very smooth and very sleek. I mean, you, you feel it in your hand. Maybe I would have wanted some jumping up here or something to give me a little more grip, but this is kind of a more gentlemanly style EDC knife. So, I mean, I'm not sure that would have maybe been appropriate, but you know, whatever the case is, the ergonomics are fine. The clip, I don't really feel a clip at all. And speaking of the clip, let's talk about the carry. Perfect clip, perfect. This is how every pocket knife clip should be. This is great. Inset to the scales with flat screws. The clip, ha it, it's a short clip, but long enough. It doesn't come up into such a big hand stabber, but it's definitely enough to climb over your pocket. The knife itself folds up into a, a cylinder and uh, it's relatively lightweight. Yeah, this thing is, this thing's a dream in the pocket. There it is, deep carry. Get your hand in there. Yeah, you're not gonna have a problem carrying this knife whatsoever. There it is right there. Okay, let's go ahead and, and start cutting some stuff. Os 8 blade, a spay blade, um, which is actually a really, really good shape for uh, EDC. I don't have any problems with spay blades whatsoever. I think they're pretty, pretty I think they're pretty cool. I was gonna say pretty, pretty nice. Seems like a, uh, a weird thing to say. Full flat grind, um, not the tallest blade, so the grind's not gonna get to the thinnest edge, but the stock isn't super thick. And as you can see there, they do get down to a, a decently thin edge. Not anything that's gonna like win awards, but it, it's okay. If I could stay in my cut and hold on to the cardboard, that would be really, really helpful. So yeah, slice is just fine. You can also do utility cuts with a spade blade pretty easily because the tip is dropped quite a bit. So you can get to it nicely. I hate this table. I hate this. Look at this. Look at this. Here's how much I'm having to like bend over in order to use this table. It's not natural at all. I feel like I'm losing all the power in my grip. But whatever. Whatever. Yeah, so it um, goes through cardboard just the way you'd like. I can't wait to have my truck back. <laughs> so let's go ahead and do our rope. Pretty nice, pretty nice. I predict this thing is going to do really, really nicely on the push as well. I mean, look at this. So here's where my hands naturally want to be. When I'm working on the bed of my truck, I'm kind of doing stuff like this. What, right here, I can't even reach, so I'm gonna have to, I'm having to like bend over. I don't know, it's just, it's just not fun. Also, the table is not that steady, which I could probably fix, but yeah, whatever, whatever. One, two, three. Okay, Um, it did all right. Not quite as well as I was expecting, but also not bad. So, hooray. Now time for the pool noodle. Oh my gosh, this damn table. It's gonna drive me nuts. It's gonna drive me absolutely nuts. Okay, I'm gonna go find something to put under this leg. All right, let's see if that fixed our issue. Okay, so that one doesn't really count. All right, don't blow away on me. Oh my goodness. <sighs> Perfect.
professionalism, guys. Professionalism. Okay. So, we did really, really well. We were able to get pr pretty darn thin. We didn't bind up all that much. We did have a little bit of waviness. You can see there. That might have just been me bending over. Might have been the edge. Uh, I can tell the edge isn't super consistent. We're definitely wider on this side than this side, but overall, it did all right. <laughs> Alrighty, let's go ahead, talk about what I'm liking and not liking about the Swiss Tech Gorundet. I'm going to have to keep practicing how I say that. Um, so, first of all, this is definitely the most high quality feeling knife that we're looking at today, which makes sense because it is the most expensive. It was just barely under our $30 um, limit. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's a couple things I really like. First thing I love is the access to the lock bar. Look at that. Look at that. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's exactly what we want to see. That's great. Next thing I like is I, lo I love the folded up profile. I'm a sucker for knives whose blades disappear completely into their handles. And this one, we've got a little bit of blade poking out. But uh, yeah, that's, a, that's pretty cool. And as the name might suggest, yeah, this is a very rounded knife. Uh, the other definition, um, labial, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure uh, if that applies here. This reminds me more of... Uh, we're not going to finish that sentence, but... I'm sure you guys knew where that was going. Uh, speaking of the roundedness of this, we are a little bit contoured and the ergonomics as a result are really, really great. Um, this is as neutral as you can get. This will fit any hand on any human, possibly any animal. I mean, if, if it's an animal capable of grasping things, uh, I think it will be able to grasp this pretty easily. Uh, yeah, just very neutral. I mean, it's contoured. It fills the hand nicely. And uh, yeah, that's it feels good. It's very, very nice. Next thing I like, um, the fit and finish out of the box is gr was great. Um, centering is spot on. And the inlay work is actually really, really nice. So you can see here the inlay is held in with a pivot and one screw here. And then I'm guessing when we take that screw and the pivot out, this little thing of aluminum will come off and there's another screw for the liner here. That's cool, right? Um, I like that. Uh, the finish with the backspacer is very nice. It's very smooth. And the carbon fiber is honestly um, a pretty good quality carbon fiber. It's got a little bit of texture to it. It's not just a shiny sticker. I like that a whole lot. Now, you can see here, excuse like the dirt and stuff from me carrying it. There are a little, some gaps in the uh, in the fitment. This is a pretty cheap knife. I gotta say the, the fitment is way better than I was expecting. The pocket clip is perfect. Literally perfect. There is nothing they could have done better with this clip. This is how every pocket clip should be. This is beautiful. It's sunk into the scales. It has flat screws. It's nice and short, but it's a little bit wide, so it's not going to be poke, poking you. The bill comes up enough to crawl over your pants, but not enough to like poke you in the hand. This is a beautiful, beautiful clip. Pretty much perfect. Well, there's one thing they did that wasn't perfect, but I love that a whole lot. Next thing, I do like the, the lanyard hole here. Um, you can see here, they, they took a lot of care in building this. So this whole knife does feel like it, you know, a lot of thought was put into it. Um, and honestly, so I'm not someone who's a big lanyard person, but if you're going to have a lanyard on a pocket knife, this seems like a smart place for it. Rather than having it up here, this does seem like a better spot. One issue I always run into with lanyards is when I hold them, when I hold a knife that has a lanyard, if the lanyard's up here, it'll like bunch up and I can feel it in my hand right here. If I had a lanyard on that. It'd just be off this way. It wouldn't be in my way at all. Um, yeah, so I think that's I think that's pretty smart. I like that a whole lot. Good job, Swiss Tech. Um, the next thing uh, we're talking about the build quality a little bit. They they really did like try and uh, and make this knife. It, like I said, it, it feels premium. One of the things is it has external stop pins, and yes, these are external stop pins. I've made several videos about this. This is one of my pet peeves. In the industry, come on, focus. Or in the the hobby, um, I see so many people focus up camera. So many people will call these an internal stop pin. No, 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 no. There's a different. These are external stops, just like you would see on a hinderer with the thumb studs. You know, meet up with the blade. 
These stops are affixed to the blade, they move with the blade, and they hit on grooves in the frame to provide the lockup. That is an external stop pin. An internal stop pin is a stop pin that is fixed, and the blade moves around it, right? If the stop pin is on the blade, and it moves with the blade and hits the frame to lock up, that is an external stop pin, even if it's covered by the scales, right? An internal stop pin is a pin that the blade moves around. And then of course, a regular stop pin is just, you know, that. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's that, that's something that, that bothers me. That, yeah, anyways, nomenclature. So there we go. There's, <laughs> get off my soapbox now. Um, but yeah, this knife does feel very, very well made. And um, let's go ahead and talk about the action. Because the action for me isn't a pro or a con. At first I thought the action was terrible because the detent did feel light. But the more I used it, it got to the point where, like, I would never miss a flip with this. Um, the flipper tab is positioned really well. And, yeah, the detent is a little bit lighter than maybe I prefer. But uh, it works. Can I still fail it? Yes, I can. But if I, like, try at all, I'm going to get it. Maybe they could have jumped the flipper tab. That's something that I think, you know, could have been made a little bit easier. But, you know. And on the clothes, it's pretty smooth. Sometimes though, I've noticed it'll get hung up right here. I I don't know why. And sometimes it won't, but sometimes it will. And so, I don't know. The action though, I think is fine. I've heard a lot of people complain that, that these have light detents, that the action wasn't real great. And so I can definitely confirm that it's not, you know, unique to just my model, but I don't think the action's bad necessarily. All right, let's go ahead and talk about some negatives. Number one, wish they would have made the pot clip reversible. I know this is kind of a gent style knife. It's more of a, you know, maybe a formal type of carry and sometimes putting a space over here messes up the aesthetics, but I think they could have done it. Especially since this knife would have been a great one for lefties. Um, but yeah, there we go. Oh, I didn't talk about the blade at all. I am so sorry. I thought I talked about the blade. I was looking at my notes here and I realized I didn't. So this blade is a fine blade. Um, we'd get it down to, a decent edge. It's a little bit robust. It's a flat grind on a very, you know, short blade. Um, but it's got a spay blade shape. I love that. You can get to the tip. You can do some like drilling and stuff. Great blade shape for EDC. Um, the Aus 8 is fine. This great coating on the blade, I, I kind of like. And um, yeah, this is a this is a knife that will definitely perform, you know, just fine. So the blade I think is is fine. All right, back to the negatives. <laughs> so yeah, reversible paw clip would have been great. The next thing is the blade to handle ratio is like really weird. Like they could have fit a lot more blade into this handle, but you know, again, we're, we're, we're kind of getting to nitpicking right there. Um, honestly, there's not a whole else lot that, that I think is bad. Let's go ahead and talk about the um, packaging real quick. Very nice packaging. So here it is, you know, you get this little box that has a very strong magnetic seal, which is pretty cool. You open it up, there's where your knife goes. You got like, you know, all these uh, specs out here. Get your knife out of there. Um, they do say designed and developed in the USA, even though I'm pretty sure this is made in China. Yeah, made in China. Design in the USA. I never really like when companies do that, but whatever, you know, they did that. I will say, if they toned down the packaging and could bring the price of this down by a little bit, I think that would be great. I mean, the packaging is really nice, but I'm not sure I need all this packaging from a Walmart knife. So if they could, you know, make this a blister pack knife and take five, ten dollars off the price, um, I think that'd make this knife very, very compelling. So just want to point out uh, the, the packaging and stuff because I do like the packaging, but it might have added some unnecessary cost. All right, so final conclusions. Um, I really like this knife. Uh, um, Swiss Tech has been on my on my list of, not, of brands to check out for a while. I just haven't got around to it. And originally I wanted to check out their Micarta scaled flipper, but the Walmart I, I go to didn't have that. They only had this one. And I was a little bit disappointed, but after carrying this knife for a little bit, uh, I'm actually glad that I decided to test this one because again, if they had the green scaled one, I wouldn't have ever grabbed this one, um, but I'm glad I did. This is a fun knife. This is, this is a fine knife. 
Um, I don't really have a whole lot of issues with it. Um, compared to some of the other knives on this list, it is a little more expensive, and so that might hurt it at the end of this uh, Cheap Knife Week when we rank everything. But as far as a knife goes just by itself, uh, yeah, I think it's fine. Um, especially for, you know, a knife that you can just go and, and buy at Walmart. Uh, I think it's fine. I'm impressed with what I'm seeing from Swiss Tech uh, as far as their knives go. And I will probably review more in the future. So something I'm just realizing is I have not checked the hardware. And that kind of looks like a T8. So let me check that. All right, let's see here. There's a T8. Okay, no, it is a T6. Okay, just had to check. It looked a little bit big, but yeah, T6. But anyways, that's gonna be it for today's video, guys. Yeah, this is a this is a cool one. So let's go ahead and give you a sneak peek of what's coming up tomorrow. Woo! Okay, that's it. Uh, I will see you guys then. If you enjoyed this video, leave it a like, comment below, and subscribe. I've been Gideon. I hope you have a great day, and until next time, Feliz Navidad, because it's the holiday season.